Hi, welcome to Tessera's Nerf Room. So today we're going to be taking a look at a subject that I am asked about ad nauseum. Basically every single day people ask about this list. That list is the top 10 best blasters in my collection, or at least my personal opinion of the top 10 best. <music> I should probably give a little bit of background as to why this list is so difficult to make and it simply comes down to the fact that nerf blasters fit into tons upon tons of categories and classifying one as the best means that every single other category is basically made useless. It is like saying that the strife is perfect because this and this and this reason, but that disqualifies all of these other blasters from being in the same spot, even if they do just as good of a job as the strife, primarily because they fit a different niche than the strife fills. So it's, it's really all over the place. And I am not just counting nerf branded blasters in this video, I'm going all out and including everything that I own, which is partially why this video has taken me so long to make, because sorting through all these blasters to find my 10 absolute favorites that I would pick over everything else was quite a doozy. Custom mods don't really count because those are my personal creations, I'm mainly judging these blasters as they came out of the box. And obviously some various picks on this list are going to be hot takes just because I have my own opinion. It differs from most other people's opinions and you guys just gotta understand that. With that said, let's get started with an honorable mention. And our honorable mention goes to this ungodly contraption. This almost made the list, but I didn't put it on the list for a couple reasons. My, mainly just because of how difficult this blaster actually is to get your hands on. Yeah, it's obviously really expensive due to just how massive it is, but also you can't even get it through Amazon or even through any conventional website. You have to go to like the Bungie official website and then order yours custom and it takes forever for it to ship and then actually arrive at your house. And it's just like it is an absolute colossal pain to actually get one of these even if you do have the $200 that they are charging for it out of the box. God forbid you actually pre-ordered it, it, it's just, I don't know. This blaster almost made the list, but the difficulty of getting your hands on it and the fact that it appeals to such a slim portion of the nerf community, I just didn't see a way to fit it on the list. But it is an honorable mention because if it weren't for those couple things, this thing definitely would have probably made the number 10 spot. Not because it's good, but just... Dear God, look at this thing. You don't see this more than once. But with that said, our number 10 spot goes to the Nerf Infinis. This is a blaster that was very revolutionary when it came out, and in my opinion, is still very revolutionary to this day. It loads itself, which is kind of a big deal because magazine loading is the one drawback to magazine-fed blasters. You have to disable your blaster for a short period of time to reload the magazine. With this blaster, you can actively reload the magazine while you're shooting, and yes, you can put darts into here while the trigger is being held down and darts are flying out of the barrel. It is a brilliant mechanism that works almost flawlessly. It is virtually impossible to jam this thing unless you actively like try to shove five or six darts in here at the exact same time. Then obviously, yeah, it's going to clog up because that space is only designed for one dart. But even then, they've come up with this funnel system to keep only one dart going in at a time, so it manages to unjam itself after a few seconds. This is a super well-made blaster when it comes to the gimmick, but that's basically it. The actual blaster part of the blaster isn't the best. I would prefer a rapid strike because the rapid strike has slightly better ergonomics, a slightly better design in my opinion, and just a slightly better everything else, including putting the magazine in and taking the magazine out. It's pretty rough. The rate of fire is pretty rough. There aren't very many tactical points on it. You got a barrel attachment and two rails, but that's basically it. And the stock is just a little bit too short. I feel like the stock could have been longer. If the stock was a little bit longer and the grip was a little bit better, then chances are this would have probably made it further down the list. But as it stands right now, it sits comfortably at the number 10 spot. At the number 9 spot, we've got the Mega Roto Fury. This is the best Mega Blaster I think has ever come out. I don't think there's any Mega Blaster or Mega XL Blaster that is better than the Roto Fury for a vast multitude of reasons. The ergonomics, the usability, the appearance, the smoothness of operation. Ah. Oh. It feels great, it feels powerful, it shoots hard, it has a good capacity, it just works incredibly well, and 
it's got slam fire. There is really nothing to hate about the Roto Fury, even if it doesn't have a stock, which is like the one thing I would have added is a stock attachment point right here to put a stock on it. But there are no Mega Blasters that have stock attachment points, so I understand why they didn't put it on this one. They're not going to make one exception for one random Mega Blaster except for when they did it with the Mega XL Boom Dozer all the way at the end of Mega's runtime, which just makes me wonder why did they only do it on that one and none of the other Mega Blasters? But honestly, I think if you look at one Mega Blaster and one Mega Blaster only to have in your collection, it would probably be the Roto Fury, just because it is so good and done well in so many different ways. I honestly can't find any complaints with it outside of the fact that rotating the cylinder it feels painful. It doesn't like rotating, which sucks because everything else about this blaster is fantastic. Coming in at the number eight spot is the Busby Spin Shot, a relatively new blaster, especially because it literally came out this year and quickly one of the funnest things to ever grace my whole collection. This blaster is the first blaster Busby has made where I actively said, wow, this is on par with some of the stuff that Nerf has made. The plastic quality feels way thicker than what Busby has put out before. The ergonomics are heavenly. Both the main grip and the foregrip are massive and super comfortable. It works very, very good. And it offers a brand new interesting gimmick that's never been seen before and does it super well. If you've ever wanted a portable Nerf skate shooter, well, I'd say this is your best bet. I don't think it's good at being a blaster per se because the projectiles are made of plastic, they don't have foam on them, and they do hurt if they hit you because they're spinning like razor blades. However, as a portable target shooter that launches skate discs out of the sky and shoots them pretty slow like vortex discs do, where you can actively shoot them out of the sky with higher power Nerf blasters, this thing is amazing. It is super cool and interesting, and I just had to include it on the top 10 list because I can't get enough out of it. This is genuinely my favorite blaster that Busby has ever put out. At number seven is the rival Helios. This is the best rival Springer that I own, hands down. I love everything about this blaster. The ergonomics, the appearance, the prime smoothness. Ah, it's so good. It's so responsive. It shoots just as hard as the Apollo does, so basically like peak rival performance, but it's done everything better than the Apollo did. A true upgrade in every single way over the Apollo with a very, very nice looking design. I love the Helios so much. The Helios and the Hera, I think, are the two best blasters that came out of Rival, just like right up next to the Prometheus. Somehow, they came out in the exact same year as the Rival Hades. We don't need to talk about that again. But I honestly would take the Helios over any other Rival Springer, period. It's just, oh, it's so good. Let's move on to number six. At number six, we've got the Nerf Moto Blitz, the most CQB Raven reskin I've ever seen in my life. Look at how thin this thing is. It is super thin, and I think that this was a worthy Raven reskin in the Elite 2.0 series. Not only is the ergonomics and general ease of use very good, but it comes with one of the coolest gimmicks I've seen in a long time. A six tart master key pump shotgun thing, where it actually has a functional air tank instead of a hamp, with a blast button on either side that launches all six darts out at the same time, and within five minutes you can modify it to make it unreasonably powerful. Powerful. Most of the drawbacks this blaster has don't have anything to do with the blaster itself, moreover just Hasbro's terrible marketing decisions, like making the tactical rails worse and making the scope too far down, even though it looks very sleek and aerodynamic, like it's built into the top of the blaster like this. It is practically unusable unless you were to use this like a pistol for some bizarre reason, but it's just little things like that that detract points from this blaster. If you ignore those little details and just look at this as a base blaster, it is very good, especially for a flywheel bullpup, which are known for having very sticky triggers. This is one of the smoothest, snappiest triggers I've ever seen on a Nerf flywheeler stock. At my number five spot, we've got the Doomlands Persuader. This is the best four-shot Smart AR pistol I've ever used. I don't like four-shot Smart AR pistols, and this is the first time I've genuinely had fun with a four-shot Smart AR pistol. The only thing that it really has against it is the ergonomics. This grip is not very good. But with that said, the only like four shot smart AR pistol that had a somewhat decent grip is the quad fire and I will not be caught dead using that thing in a nerf war. I would gladly run this in a nerf war as my sidearm. It is very nice looking, it's hammer action, it's got great performance shooting right on the 70 FPS par out of the box 
for a tiny nugget shaped pistol and I genuinely love this blaster way more than I reasonably should. Traditionally this spot would go to the hammer shot but I don't know I have just had a lot of fun with the persuader and I think that this is the peak of four shot smart AR pistols and really the only one that nerf actually did right. At the number four spot, we've got the Zuru Ragefire. The only time I have ever said this is a heavy gunner blaster that you can use effectively as a primary no matter what your loadout is. And I stand by that decision to say that to this very day. This thing is absolutely amazing. Not only is the performance incredibly good and the rate of fire incredibly fast for a stock like Nerf class flywheeler, but it just looks so cool. It's comfortable, it's interesting, it's unique, it's affordable, it's massable, and it looks really good for being a heavy gunner blaster and works very well for being a heavy gunner blaster. This is what the Titan CS50 wanted to be. I'm sorry, you just aren't worth the hundred dollars. You're not worth four hundred dollars either. This is definitely worth fifty and I would honestly pay a hundred dollars for this. I'm sorry. At number three we've got the Nerf Rapid Strike. This is a timeless blaster that even though mine isn't really doing too well today, it is just a masterpiece. It is the coolest fully automatic blaster ever created. It literally looks like a machine gun. It is super comfortable. The stock is a perfect length. The foregrip, while kind of being non-existent, is also very comfortable because you can easily just hold this front part right here. It takes mags. It's got a somewhat decent rate of fire out of the box. The triggers are very well made, except for the main trigger. For some reason, it's really smushy. I don't know. I really like the Rapid Strike. It's hard to find ways to complain about this thing without actively going out of your way to look for things to complain about. It's supposed to look like it's all old and busted up. That was kind of the design that I was going for with this blaster, and I think that it works. Overall, I just... I don't know. There's not much to say here that hasn't already been said a million times by every review of this blaster on the face of the Earth. The blaster is incredible. The blaster is the Rapid Strike. And there's only two left, and a lot of blasters that you guys probably expected to be on this video didn't even make the list, and I will explain why afterwards. At number two was the Worker Harrier, and I was really debating whether or not I even wanted to put this blaster on the list because of how much feedback this thing gets, both in the positives and in the negatives, no matter what you say about it. There are people who absolutely love this blaster for the idea that it is a new revolution in the world of pump action springers. It is very nice, it is very comfortable, it's very well made, and it's just very cool looking. At the same time, there are people on the other side who really hate this thing because it's just another pump action springer and and you can't mod this one because it's already perfect out of the box, which is a notion that I heavily disagree with. When it comes to modding blasters, it doesn't just comes down to performance or having the biggest spring. It comes down to what do you want your ergo to be like? What do you want it to look like? What do you want to have on the blaster? What do you want the barrel to be like? What do you want the stock to feel like? And this blaster has all of those things interchangeable like a Rubik's Cube or like a Lego set. It is truly one of the easiest blasters to mod out there and one of the funnest blasters to mod out there because everything just works. Not to mention the base blaster out of the box is super cool. The grip is wonderful. The stock is wonderful. The foregrip works. It's very powerful. It shoots 200 feet per second out of the box. There's a misconception. I thought it was hitting 300, but no, it's actually 200. It just works so unreasonable reasonably good, and I can't really find anything to complain about here. Even the price is justified. $180 for something like this seems reasonable because it is truly one of the nicest blasters you can possibly buy for that price range. I love this thing so much that I often just load up magazines and sit on the couch while watching TV, turn to the side, and shoot this at targets over here for no reason, just because I feel like it and just because it's fun. There are very, very few blasters that I like doing that with because usually like using them, there's something annoying about them. Not this one. There is nothing annoying to me about using this. And yet there is one that I like more than this blaster. You could probably guess what it is. And number one is the... <laughs> no, this joke will never get old. <laughs> this joke will never get old. At number one is the Nerf Double Punch. This is the best blaster I have ever used in my life. It is super comfortable. It is 
super light and easy to whip around corners. It is super nice, the, like it feels premium. It feels like an N-Strike product. It loads from two magazines. It, the trigger is so smooth. It shoots so fast that you can outperform the hyperfire with its rate of fire. Especially if you were to rewire this thing for a lipo, you could get the fastest semi-automatic flywheel blaster imaginable on the planet right here for $35. And it appeals to everybody. Whether you're a performance guy, a casual nerfer, or somebody who likes gimmicks, this fills every single niche that you could possibly imagine in terms of the nerfing field, even the heavy gunner niche in some capacity, because it mimics the rhino fire with the, the, the barrel things. That's something that you would expect to see on a big heavy gunner blaster, and yet this is simultaneously a heavy gunner blaster and a super compact CQB primary. What the hell, Hasbro? You don't get to make something this good that I can't complain about. I don't think Nerf will ever be able to reach this standard ever again. Even if Nerf makes something that is completely original again, I don't know if they're gonna be able to pull it off quite like they did with the Double Punch, where it's just such a wide, broad audience is brought in with this thing. And just like two magazines, binary trigger, it's made so well, and it's so cheap and affordable. Like, I feel like I'm dreaming. I feel like I'm gonna wake up and this thing's just not going to exist because I've been asleep my whole life, and it's just like, oh, well, that sucks. The double punch isn't real. Now, I'm going to address the elephant in the room. Why wasn't the strife on the list? Because I'm sure everybody, every single person watching this video is asking why the strife is not on the list. It is very simple. The Strife is a magnificent blaster when it comes to modding because there's just so many things that you can do with it. In fact, I'm literally in the process of modding mine right now, which is why it, this space has been empty for so long. I'm still working on it. I'll get to finishing it eventually. But just stock out of the box, the blaster is very mid. It doesn't shoot that well. It doesn't shoot that hard. It's comfortable, but the locks are super annoying. It's very slow to rev up. It's just a mediocre flywheel blaster, and the only thing it really has going for it is the abundance of attachments and how small and compact it is. And as I said at the very start of this video, I am judging these blasters as they are stock out of the box with no modifications. I love the Strife, believe me, I really, really do, but I didn't put it on the list of best blasters because out of the box, if you were to just buy a Strife for the sake of having a Strife, it just isn't very fun. It is just a blaster and that's just what I think about it. So, with that said, feel free to leave your list in the comment section below. Also, yes, the Max Dictator wasn't on this list either, and that is because when you put Talon mags in it, it, it holds them a little bit too tight and it doesn't mag drop them, but it doesn't really matter. Post your list in the comments. Thanks for watching. Bye.